Well, good morning. And Jason, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, to Jason Zacker, the Senior Vice President of Business Advocacy with the Greater, Greater Greenville Chamber of Commerce. I apologize. Yep. Um, <laughs> and thank you so much for joining us. This is a program that we're doing. It's called Greer Chamber Live. Uh, we're doing it during the uh, COVID-19 um, uh, pandemic that is kind of crippling the the, con the country and the and the world at so many levels, especially for the economy. But uh, one of the uh, bright sides that's coming out of this is our uh, federal government has stepped up and um, just passed a $2.2 a trillion dollar, a relief package. And part of that is uh, the phase three that we'd like to hear about today. And in phase three, it's the uh, CARES Act that's really with the small business, um, small businesses taking a, a hit and our nonprofit world taking a hit. Um, what is it, what is out there that can help uh, give some relief um, to uh, their business today. And I'm going to turn this over to you, Jason. And again, thank you so much for joining us. No, thanks, David. I appreciate it. And this is a, this is really great. For, I want to first, though, I want to thank uh, Senator Graham, Senator Scott, Congressman Timmons. They've been a huge help. I've been working with them over the last 10 days on what this looks like uh, and, and trying to get our input from the chambers and small businesses that have been calling me uh, through the Upstate Chamber Coalition, through the Greenville Chamber, Greer Chamber, et cetera. So, They've been very open to ideas and very willing to work with us on anything that we can we could possibly give them. So there's a bunch of things. I want to focus strictly on the business side of this uh, for the chamber. Now, obviously, everyone knows there's going to be checks coming to folks individually, $1,200 per person, $500 per adult, $500 per kid, uh, up to about if you're married, about $150, $175,000, and that starts tailing off. So um, you can get more information about that. I can pull that together for you separately. But I really wanted to focus on the business aspects of this. Um, first off, I think the biggest part is this new payroll protection loan, and that's what a lot of people have been hearing about. I think there's a lot of questions. It basically will give you a loan uh, for any to pay for your payroll for businesses of under 50 employees. Um, so you go to this, to, in order to get these loans, you have to go to your bank. So go call your lender, call your banker, call a local bank. Most local banks in the upstate uh, can do this. Uh, you know, the TDs, the BB&Ts, the uh, South, uh, Southern First, South State, all those kind of things can, and they're adding banks. One of the things in this law is adding banks that can do these kind of loans. So pretty much any bank you might go into in the next week or so, you're going to be able to go get these kind of loans. So um, a couple things. If you normally would, uh, up, if you normally would qualify for one of these SBA loan programs, uh, if you have fewer than 500 employees or you meet some of the exemptions, if you have more than 500 employees, uh, you qualify. Uh, 501c3s qualify. And there's a bunch of exemptions, requirements that you have to go try to exhaust all loan opportunities elsewhere. Those have been waived. Uh, requirements that you have to put up collateral have been waived. Um, and it's all there. And so a lot of these rules, if you didn't, if, if you did qualify before, you qualify now. If you didn't qualify before, there's a good chance you do qualify now. Um, and so David, as you and I were talking before this, uh, you know, one thing that had always hamstrung the hospitality industry with these loans before has been this idea of affiliate locations. So if you have multiple affiliate locations across the area, let's say you're a small restaurant that has someone Taylor's and Greer and Greenville and all Pelham Road somewhere. Um, now, th th those used to uh, all be brought together as you, how many employees you had and whether you qualify or not. They don't. Now it's per location. So now you can qualify for those, for example, but you got to go talk to your banker and double check and, and see what uh, what you know. Um, that's the I said that's the overview of, the, of what's the big part of that. What the uh, Small Business Administration should be putting out guidance on these by the end of the week. We're hoping, if not, maybe early next week. Um, so, uh, so we'll have a better idea, and you can definitely go to your bank by the end of the week. In the meantime, I would urge folks to please look at your payroll, your average monthly payroll for the last few months, as well as rent, utilities benefits uh, would qualify for these loans and start putting that information together uh, so that way you know what you might qualify for. The loans are up to $10 million too. So for most small businesses, that should suffice between now and, and June. Do you have anything, any that, other questions or are you no, keep going for a while um, on this? <laughs> that's great information. And I think, you know, for our business community and, and we, we started talking a little bit about this um, prior to the, to the recording, but for our business community, just to, to think ahead, and I'm glad you said start uh, planning ahead. I know uh, for the chamber, for the Greer Chamber of Commerce, we did just that. We put down our, um, we, we started to 
put down our numbers to see what it looks like three months out, um, four months out. And I think that's, that's wise for the small businesses if they haven't done so already to start looking at what that payroll looks like, those benefits um, look like. And like you said, there's a lot, I, it, it's hard, I can't even wrap my arms around what a trillion dollars is, but there's, it's going to be a relief package. But to act sooner than later is probably healthy. Um, and also to find those resources um, with the with with those local banks. And if the banks, if the local bank that you bank with can't do it, they will send you to uh, someone. But what you mentioned earlier is most most have a um, are getting a handle on it and are working around the clock to make sure they're they're ready for it. Yeah. So, you know, part of the issue with this too, remember there's two different kinds of loans. There's the disaster loans that have been available for a few weeks now. And then we have the, the new PPL payroll protection loans. And so you cannot take those two loans out. So if you were proactive as a business and you went and got your disaster loan already, call, talk to your bank, you might be able to roll that into a payroll protection loan if that's what you were using it for. Now that's kind of a case by case basis. So there's no, I don't have any general guidance on that. But the U.S. Chamber has been telling folks that to think about doing that. That's something that, that you might be able to do to then get it forgiven, which is the other key part of these loans is can you get them forgiven later? Um, yeah, the general idea is that you can. Um, they're going to go about look at an eight-week period after the origination of the loan. So that would get you into, you know, at this point, it would get you into early June probably because you wouldn't get it till next week, maybe at the earliest. So if you take out one of the PPL loans, you keep your staff on after that eight week period, um, you can then, um, you can get it forgiven under the terms of the, of the bill. Um, so it, again, look at your expenses, payroll, utilities, rent, I'm looking at the list right now on my computer. Interest on mortgage debt uh, can be forgiven. Also look at your healthcare costs um, and look at uh, other things like paid sick leave, things like that that are benefits that you're paying in. You can then get all of that forgiven. Um, one key to remember though, if you do lay people off, you will, it'll be a dollar for dollar uh, reduction in what can be forgiven. Uh, and if you cut wages of people who make more than $100,000 by more than 25%, that will also reduce the loan forgiveness. Over $100,000, you can do anything you want pretty much. Below $100,000, you, you can't cut that by more than 25%. Otherwise, I believe it turns into a dollar for dollar loss onto what your loan uh, forgiveness would be. If you have already let your employees go, and you get one of these loans and bring them back, you qualify for the forgiveness. So you don't have to worry about that. You can go, go find your employees, bring them back, put them back on payroll, and then you can get that forgiven later. And I think a lot of small businesses clearly are like families and they're probably going to want to do that. That's great. That's Sorry, David, I mean to interrupt you. One other thing too, I think is, is really interesting with this is um, looking for my notes on it. Sole proprietors, self-employed, and 1099 employees also qualify for these things. Normally they don't, but in this case they do. Not only do you qualify for unemployment if you can prove that that's why, it was, uh, that's why you lost your job and your income, but you can go ahead and get the pay paycheck protection loan for yourself if you own your own company or you're a self-employed consultant, things like that. Again, you gotta go to your bank to find out how you qualify. Some of those folks may have some, a, a bit more proof that they've gotta put in that that's why they lost their income. Uh, but, you know, traditional underwriting for these is pretty much out the window, like you would imagine the term underwriting. Uh, the, the banks are trying to get, the government is trying to get this money on the street as fast as possible. Um, so if you don't meet the criteria, you do lay people off and it, it will turn into a 10-year note after one year with an interest rate of no more than 4%. So that's still a pretty generous loan, I think, in a lot of cases for a business, um, you know, depending on how much you take out, a lot of businesses should be able to float that and, and do pretty well. Uh, on paying that back. Uh, also assuming that the economy turns around this summer like we're like a lot of us are hoping it will. Yeah, that's, that's really good information. And um, uh, the 1099 in, in, in employees or those that own their own uh, business that do that, especially the consultants. I mean, this is a, this is a time for them to uh, consider doing this. So that's great information to have. Yeah, and I, I would add too, for businesses that do have a lot of 1099 employees or other folks like that, now's the time for you to help reach out, find out what they need. Because uh, obviously these folks have been helping your business for a long time. You probably want to help them. Uh, and if they have to go to a bank and they need more documentation, you need to be able to provide that to them because, uh, you know, obviously they've been, they've been helping you out. So go help them out too. If they qualify for these things, let them go qualify for those things. So. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. This is um, great information to have. I'm sure it probably won't be the last time we, we uh, talk to you about 
um, this this type of uh, information that's going out there. What are the resources? I know um, the uh, Greater Greer Chamber of Commerce, we have a resource page. What's the resource page that you have for uh, the Greenville Chamber? Yeah, so, you know, I think a lot of our chambers have been sharing a lot of information throughout the coalition, which has been great. Uh, and so, if you go to greenvillechamber.org, uh, we have an employee resource page right on the front. You can click on it, look for the big virus looking thing and <laughs> click on that. Um, and then and then that'll take you to a lot of information too. I also would encourage small businesses, go to the Small Business Administration's website. They've got a lot of good information. Uh, the Department of Employment and Workforce, uh, South Carolina Department of Commerce, a lot of them have a lot of information uh, on a lot of different topics. Uh, and if you have questions, um, you know, obviously reach out to, to the Greer Chamber. Uh, and if David, if you can't answer it, David knows how to get a hold of me. Uh, my email is jzacher at greenvillechamber.org. And I, the last week, all I've been doing pretty much is responding to emails from businesses that have questions. And I love to do that. So please reach out to me if you've got any questions. Well, we appreciate it. And um, this, you know, it, it's, uh, it's one of those things that we can navigate through it uh, because, um, because of the, uh, the bill or, or passing two, you know, $2.2 trillion and putting that back into the economy somehow, definitely take advantage of this uh, information. And if people do want to email the, the uh, Greer Chamber, we will get those questions answered as soon as we can. So Jason, thank you so much for taking time. Um, I know you're, you're busy, but I really appreciate you taking time today and um, uh, being part of this program. No problem, David. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Yeah, you too. Okay, thank you.